want to have a meaningful and a more enjoyable bagong taon. Isa po tayo dyan. Yun po ang minimiti ng ating mga puso. But the question is, how can we make our 2022 brighter and better than the previous year? Than 2021? How can the new year become more enjoyable for us? Become more meaningful para po sa bawat isa sa atin compared to the pre previous year. O nga, yun ang gusto natin mangyari. Pero paano? Paano tayo magkaroon ng ganong bagong taon? Verse 18. Nakita nyo kanina, binasa natin. But the Lord says, Do not cling to the events of the past. Or dwell on what happened long ago. Kalimutan na ninyo kung sa language pa natin. Kalimutan na ninyo yung nakaraan. Talikuran na ninyo yun. Right? Now, dito po sa verse 18, mga kapatid. Makikita po natin ang first principle kung paano po tayo magkakaroon ng meaningful and more enjoyable new year. What is the principle? Let go. Amen. Amen. May kanta na. Let go. Ang ganda ng kanta ngayon. Let go. Let go. Right. Sa anong ang movie yun? Sa Frozen. Right. Let go of yung mga nangyari in the past sa buhay natin. Kalimutan na natin yun. Iwanan na natin. Yung mga nangyari last year or five years ago or ten years ago. Kalimutan na po natin yun, iwanan na natin yun. Do not cling to the things or to the events of the past. Sabi ng Panginoon sa mga captives. Now, what do we need to let go? Ano pong mga bagay ang dapat nating iwanan? Ang dapat nating iwaksi? Right? Well, on the part of Israel, on the part of the exile of the captives, they need to let go of their pain for having been uprooted and exiled to a foreign land. Imagine ang impact sa kanila na they were conquered and then dinala sila as captives in a foreign land. Imagine ma-approved ka, mahiwalay ka sa bayang sinilangan mo at tinubuan. Imagine mahiwalay ka from your families, from your loved ones. And imagine na hiwalay sila from the temple. Alam niyo ang temple very central sa buhay ng mga hudyo. Alright? So yung yung pagkuha sa kanila at pagdala sa kanila sa Babylon was uh, or, or created a tremendous pain on them because pinwersa silang dalhin. They were forcibly uprooted from their country and they were forcibly separated from the city they love, Jerusalem, and from the temple that they love in Jerusalem. So, ando doon yung pain. Ano pa po ang dapat nila i-give up? Yung sense of hopelessness. Kasi po dahil sa nangyari sa kanila, na-conquered sila, dinala sila sa foreign land, so, nagkaroon sila ng feeling of hopelessness. Ah, wala nang chance ako, wala nang pag-asa kung buhay natin dito. Ano kayang mangyari sa atin? Dito sa foreign land dito. Pero sabi ng Panginoon sa kanila, do not dwell 
the things of the past. Do not cling to past events or experiences. So on the part of Israel, they needed to let go of the pain of having been uprooted from their homeland. And they needed to let go of their sense of hopelessness because they were made captives. What about us? Ano po dapat natin ilag ko? Well, generally speaking, we need to let go of our bitter and painful past. Amen. Lahat tayo may mga mapait at masakit na mga experiences sa buwan. Hindi ka tao at saka hindi ka Pilipino kung wala kang mapait at masakit na nakaraan. Ito po yung application ng verse 18 sa atin. Yung principle of let go. Ano man yung mga dinaanan, pinagdaanan natin, simulan ng mga maliliit pa tayo hanggang ngayon. Kailangan iwanan na natin yun. Let the past be past. Amen. Although it is easier said than done, ang hirap po kalimutan at ang hirap po ilag go. Especially yung mga masasakit na experiences natin in the past, sa buhay natin. For example, yung experience of neglect Lumalaki tayo, we were neglected by our parents. Yung painful experience of rejection, may mga kilala tayo na pinamigay sila sa kanilang lula or lumaki sila sa kanilang mga auntie. Right? Yung experience na yun, created in their hearts Resentment because they felt rejected. Or some of us were abused. Nung nga maliliit pa tayo. Abused physically, abused verbally, and some of us were abused sexually. Masakit po yun. <coughs> Hanggang ngayon, inaabusuhan tayo verbally ng maraming mga amo. Diba? May mga amo tayo na mga madadakdak. Ordinary, or, ordinary lang yung mga salita na you're stupid. You're an idiot. Muyong! Cheesy na. Mga ganyan ba? <clears throat> And we hear it. Simula nung maliit pa tayo. Hanggang ngayon, nandito tayo sa abroad nangangamuhan tayo. Ando doon pa rin yung masasakit na experience of having been abused. At saka sino sa atin ang walang failure? Lahat tayo mayroong failure. Iba sa atin na kumuha ng board, hindi tayo nakapasa. Failure. Yung iba sa atin nagmahal, <laughs> hindi nagkatuluyan failure yung iba sa atin nakasal pero iniwan aray, sakit failure ang dami po natin experiences ng failure failure sa health, failure sa marriage Failures of ventures. Hmm, maybe some of you kagaya ko na scam. <laughs> Nabumbo pa nga ako sa ilo-ilo. <laughs> Failures. While preparing this sermon, I came across a selection. Kung ano pong mga bagay na dapat natin iwanan. Dapat natin i-let go. Basahin natin. 
Let go of comparing. Let go of compet competing. Let go of judging. Let go of worrying. Let go of blaming. Let go of anger, regrets, guilt, and fear. O di ba? Ito yung mga bagay na dapat natin iwanan sa nakaraan natin. Of course, masakit. At mahirap mag-let go. But which is better? You tell me, which is better? Inorture natin ang resentment, ang galit sa mga puso natin? O magpatawad tayo? And move on? Mabigat pag may, may bitterness at saka may pain, may anger sa mga puso natin. Ang bigat ng buhay. Pero napakagaan ng pag-travel natin, pag-journey natin, pag napatawad natin, pag inaiwan natin yun. Ito may magandang poem na, na I came across while preparing this sermon. And I'm, I'm sure makakaridate po tayo dito. As men bring their broken marriages to be reorganized to good, so I brought my broken dreams to God because He was my friend. But then, instead of leaving Him, in peace to work alone, I hung around and tried to help with the ways that were my own. At last, I snatched them back and cried, How can you be so slow, Lord? My child, he said, What could I do? You never did let go. minsan ganyan tayo po, Lord sa iyo na po to Lord ang problema ko iwanan ko na to Lord i-unload ko na to Lord sa inyo para maging magaan ang buhay ko pero yung sinasabi natin let go pero karga karga pa rin natin andito na tayo sa bagong taon salamat sa Diyos for the gift of another year Amen Yes. So yung mga nagpapabigat sa buhay natin, sa puso natin, iwanan na natin yun sa 2021. Huwag yes. <laughs> na natin kargahin sa 2022. Yes. 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 Kaya ang, ang lesson dyan, huwag ka na magpautang ng malaki, malaking halaga. Tulong ka ng masakit na mga experiences in the past. Well, let me mention uh, three reasons without explaining. Number one, because we have the tendency to dwell in the past. So we need to let go Otherwise, we will keep on living in the past. Number two, because we cannot move on until we let go. Ang ganda nung isang may sinabi sa akin, sabi niya, ayaw niya naman sa akin, sabi niya sa tungkol sa asawa niya. Ayaw niya naman sa akin, kaya... Okay. Binigay ko na lang siya. <laughs> Nilet go ko na lang siya doon sa kung sino yung gusto niya. Eh, siyempre hindi. Gumaan yung puso niya. Kasi nilet go niya na eh. <laughs> and number three, the journey will be slow and will be heavy kung yung mga bagay na dapat iwanan natin kasi nagpapabigat yung sila sa ating journey in the new year. Amen. 
So ano yung dapat yung i-let go? <laughs> Buti kayo, may asawang i-let go. Yung iba, wala pang ang jowa. <laughs> Pero mga kapatid, okay, mga kapatid, it is important to let go, but it is not enough simply to let go. There is another principle that would help us have a meaningful and a more enjoyable new year. And that principle is found in verse 19. Ano pong sabi ng Panginoon doon? Watch for the new thing that I am going to do. What does this mean? Ibig sabihin, let go and let God. Let go and then let God be in control. The exile, the captives, should not only let go of their bitterness and hopelessness, they were also told to watch. Meaning, they had to let God be in charge of their lives. Why? Because God was going to do something new on their behalf. I know hindi madali mag-let go. Pero mga kapatid, kung hindi tayo mag-let go, we will not be able to see the new thing that the Lord is about to do sa mga buhay natin at saka sa simbahan natin. Amen. So we have to let go. Number two, kailangan, kailangan nila dapat, dapat sila mag-let go because God was giving them giving them a gift of new beginnings. Kung ayaw natin mag-let go, hindi natin ma-experience yung gift of new beginnings. Hindi tayo magkakaroon ng fresh start sa buhay natin. Kasi we will keep on living doon sa nakaraan. Right? Kung ayaw natin mag-let go at mag-let God, ang kagaya natin is yung parang, parang kalabaw na naka, nakatali ba? Gusto mong pumunta doon pero hindi ka makaalis-alis kasi nakatali ka doon. Kaya kailangan pag let go tayo. And then we should let God. Right? The exile had to let go and let God. The same is true with each of us. Let God what? Unang-una, let God heal our bitterness, our anger, and our pain. Kasi hindi completely, hindi completely mag, 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 ano, maghinom yung, yung sugat ng mga buhay natin sa sarili nating kakayanan. It takes the grace, the healing balm of God's grace para magkaroon tayo ng complete healing sa mga wounds and pains and hurts natin sa nakaraan. The captivity had broken the national pride of the exile and created a terrible anguish of, of being separated from Jerusalem and from the temple they so loved. Like the exiles, we too have wounds that needed to be healed. Na-mention natin kanina yung, yung experience of neglect, yung experience of rejection, yung experience of being less preferred. Ewan ko sa inyo, pero marami ang lumaki na feeling neglected and rejected sila ng kanilang mga magulang. 
especially yung mga magulang na hindi aware ng dynamics na may paborito silang anak. Ang impact noon sa hindi paborito is less preferred sila. And it creates pain and resentment sa puso. Na-mention din natin ang physical and verbal and sexual abuse. Dami sa atin may mga ganyan experiences. Like, na-mention natin ang failed ventures and failed relationships. As OFWs, meron yung pain of separation from our families and our countries. These wounds, these pains need to be healed. But we cannot heal them on our own strength. We need the balm of God's healing touch and the healing grace. Amen. We need the grace of acceptance. Kung may hurt tayo dahil we were rejected and neglected, the grace of God's acceptance will heal the wound of having been rejected. Nireject tayo ng mga tao, tatanggapin tayo ni Lord. Amen. Ang mga tao may kondisyon, tatanggapin kita kung ganito, kung ganyan. Pero ang, ang acceptance ng Panginoon, walang kondisyon, hindi nakabase kung gaano kataas yung height mo or gaano yung korte or shape ng katawan mo. O kung may ngipin ka pa, wala na. God will accept us regardless of who we are, what we are. Yung acceptance ng sanlibutan at ng mga tao, ina-accept tayo Tanggap na tanggap nila tayo, especially kung mayaman tayo, marami tayong pera. Kaya, ang liit ng tingin ng mga in-check sa atin, mga amo ninyo, natin na, sa atin kasi wala tayong pera. Yung pinapasahog nila sa atin, barya lang nila. Right? Pero sa Diyos, hindi ganun. Yung acceptance ni Lord is not based on how much education we have attained. Yung acceptance ng Panginoon is not based on how much money we have saved or accumulated. Ang acceptance ng Panginoon is simply based on our sincere and humble desire na magbalik loob sa Kanya. Amen. Yun lang. Feeling rejected ka ba? Wounded by rejection and neglect ka ba? receive God's gift of acceptance. We all need the grace of forgiveness. Kasi lahat tayo nagkamali, nagkasala. Iba-iba lang yung mga pagkakamali at pagkakasala natin. But we are all sinners. Ano ang makakapag pahilong ng guilt natin sa ating mga pagkakamali? The grace of forgiveness. Tanggapin mo ang kapatawaran ng Diyos. Inu-offer yun sa kahit sino man na gusto magbalik loob sa Diyos. Para yun sa lahat ng mga makasalanan. But you need to humble yourself, repent, and balik loob sa Panginoon at tanggapin mo yung kapatawaran niya. Kasi po hindi tayo pwedeng, hindi tayo magkaroon ng, ng kaligtasan at kapatawaran sa pamamagitan ng membership natin sa simbahan. Kahit sampung simbahan ang pamimbroan natin. Kung hindi pa tayo nabunagin, kung hindi pa tayo nakabalik loob sa Panginoon, we are not yet forgiven. Eh? Sabi ng mga iglesia ni Kristo, pamimbro kayo dito sa amin kasi hindi kayo ligtas kung hindi kayo membro ng iglesia ni Kristo. No? That's not true. Because the church is not the Savior. Jesus is the Savior. Amen! Right? So it's not membership sa simbahan, but it is restoration of our relationship with God. Amen. And then there is the grace of new beginnings. Ano man ang mga nakaraan, mga kapalpakan nangyari, na, nangyari sa buhay natin in the past, 
by God's grace, He is willing to give us a fresh start. Baka <laughs> naka-fresh start na kayo dyan ng merienda. Joke lang. So healing from the wounds of life takes place, place when we accept God's forgiveness. Remember that. Healing from the wounds of life takes place when we forgive ourselves. Remember that. Amen. Healing takes place when we forgive those who cause us pain. Amen. Those who sinned against us. Is the more healing? Tanggapin mo ang pagpatawad ng Lord sa iyo. Balik loob ka kay Lord. Balik loob ka kay Lord. Kung sa nakaraang 2021 at previous years, parang hindi mo binigyan ng importance ang relasyon mo sa Panginoon, start anew sa 2022. Amen. Kahapon, napakaganda ng sharing namin dito sa prayer retreat. May isa sa mga bagong dating na uh, I think mga pangatlong beses niya na nagpunta sa simbahan. I think Saturday ang off niya, regular off niya. Sabi niya, last year, um, hindi si Lord ang naging priority ko. Mga kaibigan, ang naging priority ko. Kasi pag off day ko, Gusto kong pumunta ng simbahan, pero nahihila ako ng aking mga kaibigan. Okay? So sabi niya, this, this new year, today sabi niya, na-realize ko na dapat pala si Lord ang maging priority ko. Kaya starting this new year, sabi niya, pag day off ko, simbahan ako diritsyo. Kahit Hilahin ako ng mga kaibigan ko. I will say no to them because I have said yes to the Lord. Yan po. Now, I am, I am saying this honestly sa inyong lahat. Kung napabayaan ninyo ang inyong relasyon kay Lord last year, please, Kung hindi si Lord naging priority ninyo last year, please this new year, make the Lord the number one sa buhay ninyo. Amen? Amen. Kasi anong sabi ng ating Panginoong Jesus? Seek ye first. Seek ye first, not second or third. Although maraming mga tao, seek ye third. <laughs> Instead na seek ye first, ginagawa nilang seek ye third or fifth. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Kasi sabi ng Panginoon, man shall not live by Hong Kong dollars alone. Man shall not live by friendship alone. Man shall live by every word that by the word of God. Ipaano makakain ang kaluluwa natin kung sa halip na pupunta tayo sa simbahan at magsamba at makinig sa salita ng Panginoon, umakya tayo sa bundok. O naliligo tayo sa dagat. O nagbabarbecue tayo. Anong word natin doon? Oo nga, nakakain tayo may sarap na barbecue. But man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Pero, kilala mo talaga kung sino ang ang mga anak ng Diyos kasi hinahanap-hanap nila si Lord. <laughs> Kahit anong, kahit anong hila sa kanila ng mundo o ng mga kaibigan, they know their priorities. They know kung sino number one. So yan po. 
Yan po. Ang punto is that we should not only let go, we should also let God heal our wounds. Let Him touch your broken heart. Let Him mend the broken pieces of your dreams. Number two, let God make and lead the way. Let God make a way for you sa bagong taon. And let God lead your way sa bagong taon. Amen. Why? Because our vision is clouded by our past. We cannot see clearly kung ano ang kaluuban ng Panginoon. We cannot experience profoundly ang kabutihan at pag-ibig ni Lord until ma-resolve natin ang ating nakaraan, until ma-let go natin yun. Our vision is clouded by our past and our capacity to recover and move on is limited without the grace of God. Amen. Why? Because God knows and sees the best way ahead. Why should we let God Kasi sabi ng Bible, my thoughts is wiser than your thoughts. My ways is greater than your ways. Sabi ng Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean or depend or rely on your own understanding or your own ability. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And what? He will direct your path. Why should we let God? Because He has a magnificent plan for us. God has a beautiful plan for you and for me. Unfortunately, many people have not discovered the wonderful plan of God for their lives because hindi sila genuinely bumabalik loob sa Panginoon. Balik loob, kapatid, balik loob ka sa Panginoon and you will start understanding and knowing and seeing clearly the vision and the purpose of God para sa buhay mo. Paano ko nadiskubrihan na Ang purpose pala ni Lord sa akin ay magiging pastor. It started, that discovery started when I surrendered my life to Him. When I started reading the Word, studying the Word, unti-unti ni Lord ni reveal sa akin kung ano ang purpose niya. May purpose po siya sa buhay ninyo. Buhay natin. Bawat isa sa atin. But you will not discover that purpose until magbalik loob tayo sa Kanya. Right? Kailangan natin we have to let God because He is doing something new on your behalf. The Lord would like to do something new sa buhay mo. Balik loob sa Kanya para may experience mo yung something new na gusto niyang gawin sa buhay mo. Familiar tayo sa kanta na God will make a way di ho pa. Yeah? When there seems to be no way, He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way. Our God is the God of miracles. Amen. That's why we need to let Him not to let him go. <laughs> 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 let go Lord. Right? We should let God be in control. We should let God make the way and lead the way because our God is the God of miracles. In the crossing of the Red Sea, Alam ninyo ano nangyari doon? Parating na ang military ng Egypt. 
and all the Israelites will be killed. Ano po ang, ang gawin nila? Kasi mayroon pong dagat. God performed a miracle sa pamamagitan ni Moses. The, the water of the sea of the Red Sea was divided and the people of God were able to walk on dry land until narating nila ang kabilang shore. God is the God of miracles. God is the God of the impossible. That's why we should let God make a way and lead the way. Conclude the potaya. So, what are we to do to have a joyful and a meaningful New Year 2022? Joyce Mayer puts it nicely. I want you to read it with me, yung ating conclusion. Begin. What does God require of us? Our part is to believe in His promises. Our work is to trust the Lord's goodness. His requirement is that we let go and let God. Amen. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Let's pray. Madalangin po tayo. O Lord, our God, alam namin it's easier said than done to let go and let God. But thank you that today you reminded us that it is better to let go than to nurture and to nourish bitterness and anger in our hearts. And it is best na pagkatapos namin na let go ang mga bagay-bagay, we should let God be in control. We should let God make a way when there seems to be no way. Because He is the God. You are the God of the impossible. You are the God of miracles. Oh God, maraming maraming salamat sa napakarami ng mga 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 milagro na na-perform mo sa buhay namin. Especially Lord, ang, ang uh, miracle of uh, being born again. Ang miracle of having been forgiven. Ang miracle of, of change and transformation. Salamat Lord God. Ipuin mo ang mga puso at isipan ng mga anak mo at dito ngayon. Nawa Panginoon, lahat kami, itong pinakagunang worship namin for the new year will really be a, a point of rededicating our lives to you. A time of um, ayusin namin ang relasyon namin sa inyo. Na ayusin namin ang mga priorities namin sa inyo. So that this new year, we will be able to live for your glory and for your honor. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen.